Scene script. Have you ever wondered about the concept of rapture, as mentioned in the Bible, and why many Christians believe they may be left behind? Yes, the concept of rapture, a term that has fascinated and puzzled believers for centuries. It's a belief rooted deep within the annals of Christian faith, a moment of divine intervention, where it's said that believers will be taken from earth by God into heaven. The scriptural basis for this belief comes from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 16 to 17, where Apostle Paul writes, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Further, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 40 to 41, adds more details, stating, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. So, the concept of rapture is not just about being taken up into heaven, but it also carries the underlying notion of being chosen, of being the one who is taken while others are left behind. This is a concern for many Christians, they fear the prospect of being left behind, of not being deemed worthy enough for this divine event. But why? Why do some Christians worry about being left behind in the rapture? What is it that fuels this fear? Well, to understand that, we need to delve deeper into the prerequisites of being chosen for the rapture. The prerequisites that could determine whether one is taken or left behind. To understand why some Christians fear being left behind, you first need to delve into the prerequisites of being chosen for the rapture. And that, dear friends, is what we will explore in the next part of this journey. So, stay tuned as we continue to unravel this fascinating concept of faith. So, what does it take to be chosen for the rapture according to Christian belief? Well, let's delve into the prerequisites, the fundamental criteria that according to the Christian faith, are necessary for being chosen for the rapture. First and foremost, living a righteous life is paramount. This doesn't necessarily mean leading a life of perfection, but rather, it's about striving for righteousness, making a conscious effort each day to live in line with God's commands. It's about seeking forgiveness when we falter and continuously aiming to do better. Matthew 24, 13 provides a powerful reminder of this, but the one who endures to the end he will be saved. Endurance here is a testament to one's righteousness and commitment to live according to God's will, even amidst trials and tribulations. The second prerequisite is showing love to others. This isn't just about expressing affection to those close to us, but also about showing kindness, compassion and understanding to all we encounter. As 1 Corinthians 16, 14 advises, let all that you do be done in love, Lastly, remaining steadfast in faith is crucial. In a world full of uncertainties and challenges, maintaining unwavering faith can be a daunting task. However, 1 John 3.18 reminds us, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. This encourages us to express our faith not just in words, but through our actions, reinforcing our belief in God's promise of the rapture. While these prerequisites seem straightforward, the fear of being left behind stems from the challenges in truly living up to these ideals. Living a righteous life, showing love and remaining steadfast in faith sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. Imagine walking a tightrope. To your left is a sea of worldly distractions and temptations and to your right, a chasm of doubts and wavering faith. Below, a net of unconditional love, woven with strands of patience, kindness and forgiveness that seems to fray with each testing moment. This, dear friends, is the precarious path of a Christian striving to meet the prerequisites of rapture. Worldly distractions are like shiny baubles dangled in front of us. They come in the form of materialistic pursuits, power, fame, all promising happiness, yet often leaving us feeling empty and unfulfilled. These distractions can pull us away from a righteous path, diverting our focus from the spiritual to the physical. Next, we face the temptations that test our moral fabric it's like being in a candy store, where the sweet allure of sin is ever present. These temptations can lead us astray, causing us to stumble and falter in our walk of faith. Then, there are the doubts that creep in, whispering questions and uncertainties into our hearts. These doubts can shake our faith, making us question the very foundations of our beliefs. We might find ourselves asking, is God really there? 
or does he truly hear my prayers during these trying times? Lastly, there's the challenge of showing unconditional love. It's easy to love those who love us back, but what about loving those who hurt us or those who are different from us? It's a tough call, but that's what we're called to do as followers of Christ. We've heard countless testimonies from Christians who've grappled with these challenges. They've shared stories of their struggles, their moments of weakness, and their victories. These testimonies not only remind us that we're not alone in our journey, but also inspire us to persevere. These challenges, however, are not insurmountable. The key is to seek guidance and strength from the Holy Spirit. In times of struggle and doubt, Christians are encouraged to seek guidance from the Holy Spirit. But how does this work, you may wonder? Well, let's delve into that. The Holy Spirit, as described in the Bible, is a guiding force, a beacon of light in the darkness, a source of strength in times of weakness. In the book of John chapter 14 verse 26 it is written, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. This scripture underscores the role of the Holy Spirit as a teacher and a reminder of God's word. Moreover, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. As stated in Romans chapter 8 verse 26, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In the face of uncertainty, or when words fail us, the Holy Spirit steps in, praying for us and guiding our prayers. Then, how can we actively seek and receive this guidance? It starts with a sincere desire, a yearning to understand God's will, and a commitment to a life of prayer and obedience. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 tells us that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, the Holy Spirit empowers us from within, fortifying our faith and enabling us to live in alignment with God's will. In the context of the rapture, the Holy Spirit's guidance is invaluable. It directs us on the path of righteousness, helps us overcome challenges and strengthens our resolve to live according to God's commandments. It's like having a divine compass always pointing us towards our heavenly home. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, the fear of being left behind can be replaced with hope and assurance. Yes, indeed, with the Holy Spirit as our guide, we can navigate this journey of faith with confidence, looking forward to the glorious day of the rapture with anticipation, not fear. The fear of being left behind can be daunting, but remember, as Christians, you have access to a powerful ally, the Holy Spirit. As we stride into this final phase of our journey, let's delve into the importance of faith and how it can replace fear with hope and assurance. We've talked about the prerequisites for the rapture, and it's understandable if that seems like a tall order. But remember, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is not just a guide, but a companion, a confidant. It's the divine presence within you that empowers you to live up to the prerequisites of the rapture. Imagine fear as a dark room. It's disorienting, it's paralyzing. But faith is like a small candle you light in that room. It doesn't necessarily make the room less daunting, but it does give you enough light to navigate, to move forward. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It replaces fear with hope, the hope that even though the path is challenging, you're not alone. You have divine guidance. We've heard testimonies from countless Christians who've experienced this transformation. They've spoken of how their fear of being left behind was replaced with hope and assurance. They've shared how they've learned to lean on the Holy Spirit trusting in its guidance to help them live a life worthy of the rapture. In the grand scheme of things, it's not about fear of what's to come, but about embracing the love and grace that's already within us. It's about realizing that we're not just mere spectators in this journey, but active participants, guided by the Holy Spirit. Remember, the journey may be challenging, but with the Holy Spirit's guidance, you can replace fear with hope and assurance. If you're finding value in this video, we appreciate your support through subscribing and liking. The journey continues.